My mother died in a tragic car accident. It was a Saturday morning. She went out to buy some presents for her grandkids. Thanks to the slippery roads and dumb drivers, she ended up getting hit while walking on a sidewalk, dying on impact. And in some twisted turn of events, everything she bought survived, almost in perfect condition. We buried her soon after, and I remembered how one night, while we were having drinks, reminiscing about my childhood, she sarcastically said how I should leave her phone in her casket once she dies, in case she woke up. We both laughed at that. So I did just that, I left her phone, because I thought she'd want that. It also gave me some peace of mind. The following month came and went. I don't really remember much of it. It's all a blur. I wasn't in my right mind. I was mourning in my own way, not really socializing, staying away from everyone and everything at work, not going out despite multiple invitations by friends and my wife. I even skipped my kids' Christmas school play, which I hate myself for. They were so sad that I didn't come. My wife eventually gave me an ultimatum a week before Christmas. Either I get my shit together, or I'd have to find a hotel to spend Christmas at. It was difficult, but I did, and I tried, I really did. My wife and I debated for a while whether or not to include the presents my mother bought for the kids, and whether or not to tell the kids, which also meant telling them that Santa isn't real. We couldn't agree on either option, so we reached a consensus. We do give them the presents my mother bought, and we do tell them it's from her, but in a special way. Grandma talked to Santa in heaven and asked to get you these gifts, is what we told them. They cried, they laughed, so did we. Christmas was great. First Christmas without my mother, and it hurt. For some context, we opened gifts the day before Christmas, before sleep. It sounds weird, I know, but we come from an European country, and that's just how things are done here. We're used to it. After the kids went to sleep, and my wife signed off to bed, I just couldn't. It was eating me alive not being able to talk to her, and I cried. I cried so much, I was such a mess that before I knew it I had my phone held up to my ear, ringing. The ringing stopped. I pulled the phone away, looking at the screen in shock. The call timer was still ticking, it was the screen of being on call. I heard some shuffling and other weird sounds on the other side, trying to listen in closer I put it back to my ear. Hello? I said in a shaky voice. P? A female voice responded, my mom's voice. P was the nickname she always used for me. Mom? I broke into a sob. She didn't say anything for a long while. I'm sorry, mom. I'm here. She said. I miss you. I replied, clutching the phone harder, as if doing so would get me closer to her. I couldn't really understand how this was happening. Maybe I was hallucinating. It's your fault. The voice rang from the other end. What? Mom? I was confused. What did she mean by that? Her voice was weird. It was hers, but somehow broken, distorted. Maybe the connection was bad. I mean she was below the ground. It's your fault. It said again, even more distorted than before. You killed me. You killed me. You killed me. It started repeating, screaming at me. I dropped the phone and started sobbing louder, covering my ears. I stayed like that for a long while, until my tears dried out. I opened my eyes again and looked at the phone on the ground. The call was still running, now at 15 minutes. It was silent again. Mom? I asked in a shaky voice. I'm outside. Her voice was back to normal. But it no longer sounded like her. It sounded like an imitation almost. What? I asked, not believing what I'm hearing. A loud knock suddenly resounded at the front door. A single loud knock startling me. Open. She whispered, and another knock came. This is not real. I'm just hallucinating. I said out loud, 
now rocking back and forth again. I was crazy, I was going out of my mind. Another knock, louder than the one before. Then another, and another, and soon someone was just banging on the door, faster and faster, building up momentum. Stop! I screamed. Stop! I repeated, covering my ears and closing my eyes. I could still hear the banging on the door, and then a hand on my shoulder. I shook it away in shock, shouting. No! Peter? What's wrong? It was my wife, her worried eyes peering down into mine. I was now on the ground flaying my hands like a crazed man. I could no longer hear the knocking. Did you open the door? Was it her? Door? What? She looked extremely worried. Are you okay, Peter? I looked around frantically, using my hands to feel for the phone. When I found it I looked on the screen, I was still on call. Mom, see, I'm on call with her, she talked with me. I tried explaining to her. Let me in. Another whisper came from the phone. My wife was shaking her head. Go to sleep, Peter, you're not well. Did you not hear that? See? She's speaking. I shoved the phone into her face. Her eyes widened. How is this? Another loud knock at the front door interrupted her. What the hell? Who's knocking at such a late hour? She started walking over to the front door. No, don't. I screamed at her, but she didn't open it. All she did was look through the peephole. There's nobody here. Another loud knock. My wife jumped back startled. What the hell, whoever this is, it's not funny, we're calling the police. It's me. The voice whispered again. Another knock. That's it, I'm calling the cops. My wife walked upstairs, probably to get her phone. Please let me in, it's cold. It pleaded, no longer sounding like my mother, not even an imitation, it sounded like something inhuman. I slowly and shakily walked over to the front door and looked through the peephole while still holding my phone. I saw a figure in the tree line across the street, taller than any cars parked on the side of the road. It screeched loudly and started running to our house. Will you leave me out here to freeze pee? The voice said simultaneously. I backed away from the door as it got to our yard. Please no! I screamed. It started banging on the front door. Let me in! It tried imitating my mother's voice, but it wasn't her. I called the police. You better run while you still can. My wife warned as she started coming down the stairs, while also holding a large huntsman knife. The bang stopped. I built up the courage to look through the peephole again, but this time it was all black. I couldn't even see our front yard even though the yard light was on. Then I saw something move, something shifted. I realized it was its eye. It was looking inside the house. I screamed and backed off the door. What, what is it? My wife asked. I just kept screaming while pointing at the door, trying to form words in my mouth to warn her, but I couldn't. That's it, asshole. I have a knife. I'm coming out. You better be gone by then. She warned while walking up to the door full of fake confidence. I tried to tell her, tried to explain to her, but the words wouldn't come out. I was whimpering. Then she opened the door. I'm coming out. It towered over her at almost double her height. My wife froze, not even looking up. It screeched loudly and picked her up. I couldn't move. I was frozen. My wife started screaming as it ran off and back into the forest. I could still hear her screams long after she was gone. I was in shock, still frozen. Eventually the police came, trying to question me. I was completely unresponsive. All I could mutter out was it took her. The phone call was still connected to my mother's phone, now running at 76 minutes. The reality hit me eventually. Whatever it was, it took my wife. I calmed down despite my circumstances, 
and was able to explain it to the cops. They sent a search party to the forest, but weren't able to find her. They also investigated my mother's grave to figure out how someone could answer the phone call. Her grave was dug out, her casket broken in half, and both her body and her phone gone. It's been two days, my wife wasn't found, my mother's body wasn't found, and her phone wasn't found. I haven't tried calling again, I'm afraid it will answer. My kids have been asking where mom is, and all I can tell them is that she is away for a little bit. I don't know how to explain it to them that she might not come back. I hope they find my wife. I'm planning on calling the number again, pleading to take me instead of her, to bring her back. Wish me luck.